Hey, it's no secret that Intel has been trying to enter the discrete graphics uh, market. And they have done so finally with this device here, the Asus ZenBook Pro 15 Flip OLED. That is a huge name uh, that basically just describes the features of the laptop. So uh, it does have the Intel A370 uh, DGPU. You can see that it has not only the Intel J graphics uh, IG, IGPU, but also a DGPU, which is the A370. Now we know from previous benchmarks that uh, the A370 is roughly on par with an RTX 3050. Uh, it's a little places it's behind, a little places it's ahead, but roughly it's, it's on par with it. Uh, however, uh, what hasn't been answered, while those performance questions have been answered, what hasn't been answered is how well does the Intel graphics and drivers platform work for doing something like virtual reality? So uh, I know from experience that an RTX 3050, 3050 Ti uh, can give a, you know, a, a decent uh, gaming experience in VR. It, it does work. Uh, the drivers are mature and you can actually have a virtual reality experience uh, by using that type, that class of DGPU. But what about the A370M? Has Intel provided the support in their drivers? Does it actually work? If you buy this laptop, can you expect to use it with a headset? We're gonna answer all these questions coming up. So the obvious first choice for getting this working with VR are grabbing your Quest and plugging it in with a link cable, uh, seeing if that works. Uh, if not, try AirLink. And that's what I did first. Let's, let's take a look and see what that looked like. Basically, what I ran into is while running Oculus for the first time, uh, it actually installed okay. And then you get to the point where you try to set it up via AirLink, and it uh, would not pair. Uh, for some reason, you no matter what you clicked on the pairing, it just didn't decide to connect up with it. I don't know if it was did not detecting a proper GPU, could be, could be the, the case. Uh, the next thing I tried was using just the link cable, uh, connected them, I saw that the computer saw the Quest, but for some reason, the Oculus software, again, just uh, did not like what it was seeing. Uh, it did not detect it. It pretended like I hadn't plugged in the Quest 2 at all. So um, using the Oculus software itself was an absolute no-go. So um, let's take a look at the Windows Mixed Reality side and see what that looked like. Now, initially, this looked a lot more promising uh, because uh, everything, I, you know, I plugged the headset in and immediately everything started taking off. Uh, it gave a slight warning about uh, the GPU not being tested, but we were off to the races and the tutorial and everything worked just fine. What, uh, what I then ran into was two problems. Uh, first, the once you actually got to the home screen, there seemed to be uh, graphical glitches all over the place, and we'll look at that on the screen here. You can, you can see this is not this this doesn't look like something that uh, should be working um, or is working properly. Uh, better stated, so definitely uh, had some issues there. But okay, well the the tutorial worked okay. Uh, I didn't see any graphical glitches there. Maybe it's just, you know, certain textures maybe have an issue. The problem was any, no matter what game I tried to play, uh, whether it was the Beat Saber or Half-Life Alex through the Windows Mixed Reality setup, it just did not work. It uh, gave errors, it didn't like, it said it wasn't using a compatible GPU. It really did not like what was happening uh, in terms of the setup, so, now we have Windows Mixed Reality also a no-go. So where do we turn from here? Um, well, <clears throat> obviously Intel didn't validate their graphics with any VR solutions. And obviously none of the VR providers, Microsoft or Oculus, you know, decided to you know, take Intel's graphics seriously and uh, use them in their VR. But uh, we do have, luckily, 
a one-person development team <laughs> through virtual desktop. Uh, and I'll put a link to his uh, website here. A lot of people are familiar with virtual desktop if you use a Quest. And uh, spoiler alert, virtual desktop made everything work. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how I set up virtual desktop to make my Quest 2 work with these Intel graphics. And guess what? They work pretty well. Okay, so in an attempt to fix this, I have gone ahead and added uh, Beat Saber and all the VR components uh, and the virtual desktop streamer to use the high performance option. So for example, using the ARC A370 and uh, it obviously didn't work by default, but hopefully by setting every single component uh, to use the A370, maybe that's going to make it work. So I'll go ahead and try it out. Okay, so here we are uh, playing some Beat Saber on the ARC 370M. And we're getting about 50 frames per second currently. And uh, the resolution right now is at, it is at 1680 by 1680 per eye. So, I mean, it's definitely playable. It's not optimal. Uh, you're only going about 50 frames a second, uh, which for Beat Saber is not the highest I mean, it's not the most resource intensive game in terms of VR, but uh, it does work. Okay, so believe it or not, but uh, we are running Half-Life Alex in VR on an ARC A370M. And Half-Life Alex is actually really good at adjusting the scale of the game uh, to the capabilities of the headset you're using, uh, both in terms of resolution but also features. It just it uh, went down to a low level of performance uh, setting just a second ago. Um, and right now, I don't know if you can see this, but it's it's obviously not great, but I can see that we are running at between 30 and 45 frames per second which for this game is i mean it's not great <laughs> but it is smooth and it uh quite literally is playable um so far i mean we're just in the opening level but this opening level is actually pretty intense in terms of graphical elements that are on the screen so wow I mean I, I'm actually surprised that we got this far on Intel Z, J graphics when I did this on a Surface Pro 7 I believe Alex would not load at all so maybe that four gigabytes of RAM is helping and we do have a 12700H inside this machine which uh, is very capable CPU um, but yeah hey <laughs> Half-Life Half -Life Alex on the ARC 370M so uh, there you have it if if you want to be able to run this game on your quest definitely need, will need to pick up virtual desktop uh, so uh, give that a shot but it does work, and this is, frankly, the, the frame rate's picked up a little. It's now running at 60 frames a second, and, you know, it's, it's low quality settings, but it, it actually seems perfectly playable at this point. So, pretty neat. Um, obviously, performance wasn't amazing uh, it's what you'd expect for a 3050 class um, but it did run half-life alex and it did run beat saber smoothly um you know 
ideally you're at 90 frames a second on these types of things, but for an entry level graphic solution, uh, 45 frames a second is doable. And it was able to achieve that in um, both Half-Life Alex and Beat Saber were above 45 frames a second. In fact, Half-Life Alex in the opening scene ran at about 60 frames a, a second once it got going and all the textures seemed to be loaded. So uh, pretty amazing to see that working. So what is the status of the Intel Arc A370M uh, in terms of VR? Uh, well, we looked at it on this Zenbook Pro 15 OLED flip and while in the end I was able to make it work with pretty surprising results and playable games, uh, there were a lot of hoops to jump through and the major providers of VR software have failed. And it took relying on a program from a developer, single person developer, to actually make things work and then it worked well. Uh, which I think it shows a couple things. A, that Intel, they're, they're on the path to, to having some pretty decent discrete graphics. I'll give them that. It's still only 3050 class, uh, but they do have additional versions of this coming out. There'll be higher end SKUs for these ARC graphics uh, in the future, and that will definitely bump up the performance. And we'll we'll take a look at it again when that actually comes to fruition, but uh, I can say that they're powerful enough to actually provide a fairly compelling VR experience, although I would not want to have it be my primary machine for that at all. Um, but if you're casually wanting to play some Beat Saber or even Half-Life Alex, if you wanted to check it out, you literally could do it if you wanted to on Intel graphics now, pure Intel graphics. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it is a step in the right direction. So this is why people need to take uh, VR a little bit more seriously, both Intel from a perspective of, hey, let's make our platform be ready uh, for the use cases that people are actually going to put the products through, because if they would have done that, would have seen that, you know, Intel and Microsoft are very tight. Uh, and the Microsoft VR team, if they would have tested this at all, they would see, hey, there's massive glitches. And maybe they just say, hey, Intel, that's your problem. And it is Intel's problem, but uh, nobody in the in the the chain of things, obviously, no one tested this. Uh, <laughs> and maybe maybe I'm the only one who would actually try to do this in the whole world. I have no idea. Uh, but if you're selling a product uh, and it has certain capabilities, and you want to compete in the discrete graphic market, these are the things that discrete graphics do. So uh, the People need to do a better job at validation uh, when it comes to VR. Uh, the other thing that's that's ridiculous is that uh, I was able to finally get a nice and playable and good experience uh, once I installed Virtual Desktop. And again, I'll put the link is in the description. This is a great application, um, and it allows you <laughs> apparently allows you to run uh, VR even when. The people who you think would have made things work for you uh, would have actually done that. So I don't know. I don't know what to say about this. Uh, you can have a decent experience, but it's not going to work out of the box for you. So I guess this video also serves as a guide if you picked up something with an A370M in it and you want to figure out how to make it work in VR, uh, you can do it. Um, so. Anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the new look of the channel, the new content, the new uh, whatever I'm trying to do here, go ahead and do a like and a subscribe on this video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.